Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hey everybody, I'm Archie. This is the Lock and Gnome Daily Report, or TLDR for short. Your daily dose of geek news, gadget views, and answers that you can use. Like an answer to the question, what did Chris Perillo think of today's announcements at WWDC, the Worldwide Developers Conference in San Francisco, put on by Apple for years? Well, first of all, I think it was all about software, and I think for that, Apple hit a home run. Indeed, I'll be happy to see all the updates coming down the pike later this fall. At least that's what Apple says for both OS X and iOS. In fact, a story that hasn't been told around the announcements today is Apple having sewn together more parts of OS X with iOS. Keeping in mind, there are two different types of operating systems optimized for two different types of experiences. iOS for touch and OS X for traditional computing models. And by the way, if my voice sounds a little hoarse, that's because it probably is. I spend a lot of time talking to 1,300 people who came to Vlogger Fair this weekend. And thanks to you, if you contributed to either the Indiegogo project or if you attended in person, Vlogger Fair was a huge success. I can't wait to get planning the next one. I didn't look very happy in that last little clip. It's not because I'm not happy, I'm very happy. It's just that I'm kind of a little busy at the same time because tomorrow I'm heading off to San Francisco and then flying off to London, a part of ungroundedthinking.com. So if you live in the UK or anywhere in Europe or hey, if you wanna fly there to meet me, cool. I would like to do a meetup this Saturday in London. Somewhere. I have no idea where yet because I don't really know where I'm going to be staying, but London is a sure thing. For more information on why I'm going to be in the UK, head over to ungroundedthinking.com. You know, I kind of like a little bit of raspiness in my voice. But before I get to sharing my thoughts, let me remind you that the Locker Gnome Daily Report is brought to you by GoToMeeting with HD Faces. You can escape the office this summer and stay connected with your team. You can use GoToMeeting by Citrix, the powerfully simple way to meet online. Share the same screen to collaborate in real time. You can just turn on your webcam to see each other in HD video. Launch or join a meeting using your computer, smartphone, or tablet. And yes, I still plan on using GoToMeeting to meet with my Vlogger Fair team. And you can see that, well, it really worked because a lot of people were happy with Vlogger Fair. And I can attribute that to being able to meet with my team using GoToMeeting because we were able to meet without meeting in person. It worked. You can try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code Perillo. So as you can see, I have a few thoughts. And if you really want to read them, I'll be sure to put these thoughts directly in this video's description. Like many of you, I watched the live stream as Apple published it. You had to use Safari. And that really isn't a problem for those of us who are already using Safari or iOS products in general. And I tweeted the link, posted it to Facebook, and shared it on Google+, so don't say that I didn't try helping you when it was live. One hell of an intro, emotionally touching, and a focal point for the entire presentation. And I saw dots in the animation. It was really kind of neat. And I think you'd be able to watch the keynote now, at least at the time that I'm going to be processing and uploading this video. Uh, it was just really a nice way to start the event. I'm going to do my best to give you my thoughts in one fell swoop. No edits. It started out with one hell of an introduction and animation with a whole bunch of dots on the screen. Kind of neat. I really kind of got put into a mood of, wow, okay, we're going to see some pretty radical changes here. Really appreciated that. Nice way of uh, introducing the entire keynote presentation. And by the way, if you missed my Twitter feed, Facebook feed, Google Plus feed, any social feed out there, you would have missed the fact that I shared with you the direct link to where you could watch the live feed from WWDC. And remember, I made this note too, uh, WWDC is about developers, not consumers. That's a big deal because they're there for WWDC, Worldwide Developers Conference. I mean, hello for developers. It's more about software than it is hardware. So if anybody was expecting an iPad revision or an iPhone revision, uh, you were sorely disappointed, but you made yourself disappointed because this is WWDC. Hello. Uh, Apple noted they have 407 stores, a destination now for annual field trips and personal training. I think when I was a kid, we had field trips to the dairy and much would have appreciated the trip to an Apple store, but Apple didn't exist when I was growing up, nor did they have Apple stores, obviously. 575 million store accounts, the biggest internet store with credit cards on record, huge deal. And in conjunction with that, Apple paid developers $10 billion, $10 billion, $5 billion of that in the past year, three times more than other platforms 
combined. Huge deal for Apple. Uh, then Anki hit the stage. A-N-K-I, A-I plus I-O-S, kind of toys of the future that we saw today. And in conjunction with uh, newer releases of iOS, the Bluetooth controlling these uh, devices, in which case, or in this particular case, happen to be these little cars. So low power Bluetooth, uh, you know, would allow you to control different cars in the real space. So it's like a video game in real life. And it was a really neat demonstration once they got past a few snags. But hello, it's hardware and software. Hiccups are going to happen. Bad timing on Anki's part. That being said, I would plunk down money on what I saw today. That was pretty neat. It was, it was cool. You got to watch it. I can't show you. I don't have the rights to rebroadcast it. You can get your YouTube video or channel taken down for you know rebroadcasting something from Apple. Don't want to get in trouble. Mac, they noted, had a five-year total growth of, growth of 100%. Five-year total growth. And that is versus the PC, which, in comparison to 100%, is only growing by 18%. Kind of slowing down. For Apple, it's not just about making the most. According to Tim Cook, the CEO, it's also about being number one in customer satisfaction. And they showed uh, from a variety of firms how many consumers are very satisfied with the Apple brand. I'm not talking about geeks. Geeks are going to nitpick over this, that, and the other thing. You know what? The average consumer doesn't care. They just want a good experience. Ask a consumer, do you want awesome specs or do you want a really good experience? They won't even know what specs means. And that's a big deal for, uh, to Apple. And I think that, that is not to be understated. At this point in the uh, keynote, Craig Federighi took the stage. And as soon as he joked a, a, about the next version of OS X, naming it OS, they're running out of uh, cats. So they said, and they really, they've stuck with Lion for these uh, past uh, couple of revisions. They said, well, the next one, should we, should we call it OS X Sea Lion? And it got a laugh. And I was as soon as that he did that, I'm like, I just liked his candor. Like candor. Okay, is it candor? But it, it's spelled candor. Not a condor. As opposed, you know, condor. Remember Condor Man from Disney? I grew up with that too. I'd be shocked if anybody else. Why didn't they call it OS 10 Condor Man? So uh, <laughs> Apple decided to shift gears and go with a completely different line of, of uh, naming schemata in terms of future releases of OS X. But when, when Craig presented it, I just, I laughed. And I wrote this down immediately. I said, man, I love Craig Federighi on stage. Tim, I know you're not listening. I guarantee you're not listening. Anybody at Apple, if you're listening, Craig needs more stage time. That man has presence. And that only continued as he returned to stage later on in the presentations. Man, he, he had zingers and he was playing with the audience. I, the guy's got personality. Color me. I mean, I like the other Apple executives, but I think I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan of Craig. I just liked the way he presented himself. Very, very personable, very approachable, and I loved his humor. It was great. Uh, I, it was it was perfect. So OS X, I just want to throw that in. Craig fan here, uh, Federighi. Uh, OS X Mavericks, that's the next name since it's all about California with, I guess, the, the next a series of, of OS X titles. Mavericks is what they're going with, which I guess kind of works a little odd. I think people are going to shorten it to Mav. I don't think they're going to say Mavericks, or they're going to call it Maverick, not to be confused with, you know, you know Top Gun Maverick. Although I did kind of joke, I wonder what's next, OS X Gooses? Because Mavericks, Gooses, Top Gun, again, things that I grew up with. So, no, they're not going to call it Gooses, because I don't think they're switching to Foul. Uh, so what's new in OS X Mavericks? Finder tabs? Omnipresent file tags, meaning you can change a, a, a file tag in the Finder and it would change everywhere. And that was kind of nice. Uh, within a file, uh, it attributes to the file uh, across platforms, iCloud synchronization, so long as that's working, of course. Uh, better multi-display support, which is a big deal for those of us who have multi-displays. I have a early 2008 Mac Pro. It's been humming along. Uh, I, I've had a few issues with it, but... The Mac Pro has been a good computer for me over these years, although I, I think I'm about ready for an upgrade, and I'll get to that in, in just a bit. Uh, big tweaks with OS X. Huge tweaks, and Apple has posted some more details on their website uh, going into specifics. Uh, but the bottom line is they've tweaked with Mavericks uh, power, speed, responsiveness, bragging about scrolling at 60 frames per second. Insane. I love that type of smoothness on OS X and get really kind of 
uh, agitated when something stutters in scrolling on anything. You guys know that. You, you've seen me do reviews before. So it's good to see they're applying these types of tweaks to OS X on the desktop. And of course, uh, assuming that iOS 7, as we get into it, will also have boosted uh, animations as uh, the, that OS rolls out specifically on newer hardware. So that was, I, I love that. I don't care about the Finder fixes or FTFF. Yeah, I think that was the acronym. Go ahead and Google that, uh, although that's NSFW. Uh, I just appreciated that they, they looked at the, the speed optimizations because I think that, that m speaks a lot to the experience. That might also address some of the um, jitteriness in window animations on OS X, specifically on Retina Display computers or you know MacBook Pros. Uh, shared links in Safari was kind of neat. I'm not a Safari user right now. I mean, by default, I'm using Google Chrome at this point. That may change. I keep waffling. I go back and forth because Safari scrolls quickly and Google Chrome, it, it, it kind of needs to be schooled. I mean, it's not the fastest browser out there in terms of responsive, uh, responsiveness on OS X. And that's really disappointing. I, I think Google could do a lot of work in that department. And, you know, Apple went on to show some JavaScript uh, benchmarks and saying how uh, Mavericks will improve the speed, you know, over Chrome or uh, Firefox or uh, Internet Explorer, certainly in terms of, of, of JavaScript performance. Uh, it, so Google... Yeah, you know, if you really want Chrome to, to really work for consumers, I think you need to look into optimization. Okay, maybe that's just me. I would like Google Chrome to look a lot better on the back end because there's still a wonky downloads page that they haven't updated to the, the different experience they've had for a while. And, and I just wish it was scrolled smoother on, on more websites. Maybe uh, Mavericks will kind of mitigate that uh, as it rolls out too. I don't know. That remains to be seen. AppNap, a, a feature that will help save battery, battery life and power, and it... This is really probably more important for uh, users of OS X on uh, MacBooks or MacBook Pros or MacBook Airs. What it will do is, let's say I'm running an animation in a browser window, and then I flip over to Mail, but that animation is still running in the background, but I have the Mail window app over the, uh, the animation that's running in the background. The animation may still be running. It may not be running, but it's not being rendered at all, which means that there are, is less power that's drawn, so it can it conserve battery life and, of course, improve system responsiveness as well. AppNap, genius uh, 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 idea. Uh, it remains to be seen how the implementation works, but, you know, if Apple is true to form, uh, implementation should be just as seamless. Huge win for anybody using OS X. Uh, that responsiveness is, and battery life savings is going to be palpable. That's going to be, to me, if you're running a Mavericks on a current uh, MacBook Pro, uh, having AppNap running could make your battery last longer than it does today, if, if only uh, because you have the same kind, uh, kind of use case. iCloud Keychain Password Sync, not a new feature if you use Google Chrome, which I do, uh, but it is nice to see Safari has that password syncing capability, of course, with all security measures in place. Actions on OS X notifications on the desktop and auto updates on OS X software. Love those two features. So actions and OS X notifications. Um, you know, I get a, a new message pops up. I can hit reply from within the notification. Or, um, you know, I can uh, see or, or uh, delete an email from a notification instead of having to jump over to the mail app. Nice to see that on OS X, at least. Uh, they didn't really talk about that at all in uh, the iOS release, so that may not be a feature uh, pending. Auto updates, also kind of nice on OS X. The calendar has been updated uh, to add uh, more contextually relevant information. Location, travel time, weather, and the, the big thing that uh, Craig again joked about was that there was no leather. And even without stitching, it still sticks in place. I mean, he was just joking a lot. Oh, it was so funny. I loved it. I, it was just my type of humor. Uh, but yeah, uh, the skeuomorphic uh, calendar application, formerly known as iCal, it looks like a regular old OS X app, and I appreciate that. Uh, I use calendar regularly through Exchange. There is now a Maps app on OS X, Mavericks, uh, and the directions can be synced to your iOS device. Well, I know you use, you know, another device. Wiki doesn't use another device. My dog, he, I was, he was barking, so I thought I'd improvise something. Uh, let's see here. What else? iBooks is now on the Mac, uh, and I don't know why that would be interesting to you unless you're a student and you get your textbooks because uh, iBooks uh, on the Mac, which you might be using as your uh, regular quote-unquote traditional computer, uh, having it there, having your iBooks available on iOS, 
makes it a lot more convenient. And I think that is, if anything, less for the person who reads a lot and more for the person who studies a lot. That's my take on it. So if you're a student, that may very well push you over the edge to, to going with a Mac over a traditional PC, if only for that uh, convenience on iBooks. Now they just need more textbook publishers to pick up on it. Uh, they announced a new MacBook Air that includes Intel's Haswell processor, way to go Intel, uh, available today. The big, uh, the, I mean, uh, with, ha with Haswell, uh, not necessarily just in conjunction with the uh, release of OS X Mavericks later this fall, but Haswell increases battery life. So the 11-inch has gone from about four hours to about nine hours on the MacBook Air, and about seven hours to 12 hours on the 13-inch MacBook Air. Pretty big deal. I mean, 12-hour battery is, is an all-day computer. I mean, traditional computer. You may have been used to that using an iPad. MacBook Air Wireless, uh, the, the, the new version, or the new MacBook Air, this is a hardware change, has gone up to 802.11c, which it, it basically boasts a three times performance compared to 802.11n. And they also updated the Airport Extremes. Uh, it looks like a completely new design. Uh, they made it more vertically, uh, or, or I guess they. M m they designed it to be more vertical in general, so it could uh, broadcast the signal in, in a wider capacity. It has also been updated to 802.11c. I'm sorry, 802.11ac, if I didn't mention that before. Sorry, my brain's still a little scrambled. Three-stream, beamforming, stronger signals, faster signals. Uh, even though I do not have any 802.11c devices right now, uh, I, I will likely be upgrading my airport extremes as soon as I can. Yeah, just being you know prepared for when I do get 802.11c devices. And, you know, maybe that'll boost wireless signals in general in my house anyway. That means I'm going to be selling two or three airport extremes that I have right now. And maybe an airport express. If you're in the market for one, let me know. Uh, they also showed a Mac Pro sneak peek. They're not releasing it. This is, again, later this fall. Uh, I, I, I'd hesitate to de describe this. You may have already seen it. It's a, a cylinder, a small-ish cylinder, black, and uh, not upgradable on the inside uh, so much as expandable on the outside. Thunderbolt 2.0, even though the funny thing, I don't think anybody picked up on this, but uh, Schiller uh, said, I think he said at least, that there were uh, multiple FireWire ports when in fact I think he meant to say Thunderbolt 2.0 ports. And he, he I, it was a, a verbal slip. I didn't see any FireWire, FireWire ports and considering that Apple has a Thunderbolt to FireWire adapter, that, that would not surprise me. Uh, yeah, I, I would like the Mac Pro, certainly. I, I People are joking about the design of the new Mac Pro, saying, oh, it looks like a trash can. Yeah, it kind of does. Oh, it kind of looks like an R2-D2. Okay, fine. Not a big deal. I like Star Wars. You know how many times I've looked at my Mac Pro over the years? Okay, maybe more than... But I'm saying that I can't even tell you. I just I never look. It's around the corner. I'm not going to look at the machine. Uh, I can tell you I would rather look at a, a little cylinder on my desk if I had it on my desk than I would the, the gigantic Mac Pro. Uh, extand expandability happening externally, it doesn't shock me at all. I mean, I, I, it's just the way the industry has been moving. I mean, not every PC out there is upgradable either. Uh, so at least it's expandable. They've got enough ports to support what they need. And if it's fast, who cares? You know how many times I've upgraded my Mac Pro over the years? Uh, once or twice, but really not much past the, the beginning uh, when I first got the Mac Pro and I found a sponsor for it. It's a very expensive machine, but it has lasted me this year, 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, six years. Six years, and it's still very responsive, very fast, is able to keep up with modern applications, and, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, Apple really packs a punch with those Mac Pros, and now they, what what is it, uh, dual uh, video cards inside, super, super powerful, up to, it can handle up to three 4K uh, monitors. I, I, I need to upgrade those, too. My, my, mine are looking kind of sad right now. Maybe one day, just not anytime soon, I'm sure. So I would like to get that, but I, that it really does remain to be seen whether I'll, I'll do that. Uh, the funniest quote from Schiller, can't innovate anymore, my ass. That's what Craig, or Craig Schiller, Phil Schiller said, not to be confused with Craig Federighi, can't innovate anymore, my ass. I loved that. That was awesome. I'm, oh my God, it's an analog writing device that I use every so often. Sorry about that. I will not show you that again in this video. 
The Mac Pro is two times as fast as the previous unit, which is good to know. That's usually a good time uh, to upgrade your system when you know it's going to be twice as fast. Uh, they also boasted the fastest SD that they've made available. Uh, and that, that's a good thing. Solid state is kind of the future. And I don't think I would want a Mac Pro without an SSD inside. That's just, it's fast. I've had an SSD since long before many people did. In fact, some of my original SSD videos are on this YouTube channel. What it, I think I titled one, SSD is Stupid Fast. I did that with uh, Samsung's SSD drives uh, way back in the day, a few years into uh, using that Mac Pro that I've still been using. It's been running like a champ. Um, Later this year, uh, it's, it's going to be available, but it's something to note on the design, too, as I'm kind of wrapping up with the Mac Pro, the, uh, there, as you move the Mac Pro, if you, you twist it, there will be a, kind of like um, an outline that will light up to show you where the ports are. Kind of neat little thing. It's a motion sensor that they built in. Just a small little touch, kind of fun. And big deal for some of you out there, made in the USA. Uh, they talked about iCloud, uh, you know, and, and what they've been doing with that. iWork is going to be going into beta for everybody soon. It's think of it like what Microsoft's doing with their web version of Office, and what Google's doing with Google Docs. Of, it, you could use it on just about every major browser, other than Firefox. They did not mention Firefox. They mentioned Chrome, IE, and Safari, or WebKit-based browsers. Uh, so that was kind of neat. Uh, I don't know if I would necessarily switch from using Google Docs at this point, uh, even though I would say iWork definitely looks a lot more beautiful. If you're into desktop publishing, I think you'd be happier with iWork than with Google Docs, but most people just need the basic functionality of what Google Docs may be able to provide. Now on to iOS as I, I take a drip, a drip, a drink. I promised myself I wasn't going to talk a lot. Obviously, I broke my promise iOS, 600 million iOS devices sold, not just shipped. You know, if you hear a uh, manufacturer, you got to watch. You know, when they say, oh, we've shipped over 100 million devices. Yeah, but how many have you sold? And of the ones you've sold, how many are being used actively? And you got to ask these questions when you see these numbers get released. But those 600 million iOS devices have been sold. Money in Apple's pocket, which is good for Apple. I mean, hey, this is America. We got to make money, right? Come on. What, what are we, communists? No, I don't think so. So uh, with iOS, they note that it's got a higher usage compared to Android. No shock there. Less fragmentation for developers. No shock there. Uh, now, they rolled out iOS 7. My first impression of, of iOS 7 when I saw the icons, you really want to know my first impression of iOS 7 when I saw the icons. You can turn this into an animated GIF if you want. Really? That, that's the best Apple could do? Maybe I'm just not that into pastels. Maybe, maybe I'm just not a fan of, of going from light blue or cyan range to uh, another shade of blue. I don't know. Maybe I'll get used to them. Well, I don't know. The UX of OS, or I'm sorry, iOS 7. The, the user experience, uh, I, I thought, you know, is, is a fantastic upgrade. Everything that they, they changed in terms of how you use your iOS device, it's still familiar enough uh, with, you know, uh, minor changes in some cases, major changes in other cases. I appreciate the flatter design, personally. Don't mind that, but... Those, those, those default icons. And I keep looking at it going, maybe I'll learn to like it. It's kind of like the ugly dog. It's so ugly, it's beautiful. I don't, are they, is this, are they punking us? Is that, am I the only one who thinks that these iOS uh, 7 icons are fugly? You can quote me on that too. That's not a really good quote though. You can quote me on this. I'm not actually going to, you know, regurgitate here. I just wish they would have hired a different designer for that. Uh, the parallax feature on iOS 7 looks astounding. Now, this is not to be compared to me, compared to like an animated wallpaper. Yes, it's animated, 
But when it is able to change, and this is difficult to explain because I don't have it, but let's say I'm holding the device like this. If I shift it this way, the wallpaper in the background will slide off to the right. So my eyes, they'll stay in a fixed position, but the device will make it look like the icons are floating on top of something, even on this flat surface. Really kind of neat, a, a, a motion parallax. It's the easiest way to describe it. And not an animated wallpaper at all. Really, it really isn't. And I know some people are saying, ah, oh, geez, it reminds me of the Nexus, you know, the wallpaper. Oh, sure, I guess, but it, it, it is and it isn't. That parallax means everything. And I love parallax, like, especially on a certain Android devices when you swipe and move a screen over, the background shifts at a, a different rate, so it, it looks like you're you're moving one surface and another surface is at a distance. Uh, Apple's kind of taken that and, and really kicked it up a notch. Uh, so if they got inspiration from one OS or another, great. I think it's a great implementation of a, a great idea in general. I, would I really can't wait to see that on iOS 7. The translucency on iOS 7 uh, and app transition animations, uh, were uh, they were not jarring to me. I, I, I liked them. I like the translucency on UI uh, elements. So like in a mail message when you've got the, um, you know, the, the bottom part with the icons, which, you know, the, again, going with the flat design, I'm not sure I, I'm a fan with the icons anywhere yet. Maybe they'll grow on me. But uh, you could kind of see there's a translucency, so it's not plain white, like if I scroll a, a red picture in the background, uh, I may not be able to see the full picture, but that bar that might have icons, you know, is a little, uh, it's got a little red in the background. So it's, it's slightly translucent. I, I, I think that's a really good implementation for UI, not to be confused with UX. The uh, uh, control center was a nice addition. People have been complaining about this for a while, especially with Android coming along and allowing you to turn off Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and all these various settings with a quick swipe uh, pulling down the menu. Uh, one person said that they didn't like that. Uh, they were expecting it to come from the notification center from the top. And yeah, I, I don't know if they really fit up there, honestly. I mean, this is for notif you swipe down notifications. That's information, that's data that's going to be up there in the notification center. Uh, the control center, that's for control. So I need to be not notif I need notifications, swipe down. Uh, I need to control, swipe up. And while the design is a little... Uh, again, I I just don't know if... I, I, I'm a little disappointed. I, I gotta tell you, uh, the design of the control center, it's cleanish and maybe it'll be different when there are less pastel -y icons in the background. And I don't, I don't know. Maybe I just gotta use it. Maybe the screenshots just don't do it justice. I don't know, but I just, I, initially I'm just kind of, eh, on some of the UI changes that Apple's brought to uh, iOS. Not to be confused with the UX changes which has come, or which have come, which I, I think I appreciate more uh, than a lot of the UI changes from iOS, which is kind of uh, disappointing. Am I good? Does that mean I'm going to drop iOS? No, I use OS 10. It's great to have iOS integrated with OS 10. Fantastically great. So, fantastically great? Okay, fine. I just used that phrase. The, uh, the integration really, uh, it, it means a lot to me, and I, 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 maybe it, it'll be different when I'm looking at it in person. I mean, it's certainly different, but, but different is not always good. Um, but just consider me as someone who doesn't think that the UI changes, every UI change they made uh, was necessarily a good one. Safari has had a few refinements, better use of space, swiping, scrolling, and tabs. The tabs, as a matter of fact, are almost reminiscent not quite. I think they have a bit more polish than what Google had rolled out with Chrome on iOS. Uh, multitasking, uh, from some say now it's truer support with battery life, or I'm sorry, without battery life sacrifice. App switching is also different. Instead of double tapping, you got the row of icons. You might double tap, and now you have the icons, but then basically screen states of any app that you can swipe to close which we've seen on other devices you know, over the years. That's really nothing new. It's just new for iOS. AirDrop has also been added, which is nice. I've never used it on OS X because I'm never around other people with, with my desktop computer. I might be around other people with my iPhone, and if they're in my contacts, we're on the same network, I just basically tap a picture to send and go boop, 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 and then bang, it just shows up on their screen. So easy, so seamless. And uh, the nice thing is, is you don't have to bump anybody. You don't have to touch anybody necessarily. It just works. You're just psh, psh, done. Through Wi-Fi uh, and or Bluetooth is what they had said on stage. 
there's now uh, an updated camera with live filters and the swiping to change the state instead of a switch, you know, to toggle between uh, video and camera or still photo mode. You just swipe. Uh, you can also uh, swipe to enable a square photo mode. I guess they think Instagram's popular because of square photos. All right, whatever. Uh, if they think so. I'm not sure I'm a fan of the whole filters thing. That's really what Instagram is good for. But, you know, other people may beg to differ. Uh, Siri has had a visual refresh with local command additions like Siri, lower my brightness. You know, or, you know, Siri, you know, what is Chris Perillo talking about? And then it shows you the tweets. So they've added a few new features to Siri. It also looks different. Of course, it's iOS 7. Pretty much everything looks different. The photo app, or I'm sorry, photos app has been updated. Auto organized by moments with live scrubbing of thumbnails. Kind of neat because right now photos is just, it's just this big lump of crap right now it just i mean not crap but all the photos you took you know it's all one stream they broke it down based on dates and, and locations it seems uh, ios now is going to be in the car ios in the car i don't know if that's a type of airplay integration but a lot of car manufacturers are going to be integrating ios in their cars that may very well dictate what kind of car i get next because I, I use my nav system, I use that, and I've always wanted to have a, a better mapping system, and the fact that it would have an iOS deeper integration would be a huge selling point for me, and I've got a few more years to decide on that, but iOS in the car is a huge deal. I'm happy to see that. Uh, can't wait to see it in person as well, and actually have a vehicle that has iOS in the car. Uh, the App Store has been updated with uh, the ability to search for uh, apps based on age, so age sorting. Big deal if you're a parent. Uh, also has uh, the popular near you. So let's say you're. Uh, they they showed the example. You're at uh, a baseball stadium. What are the most popular apps around you that usually get downloaded or used in and around your space? And they'll show you. So it's contextually irrelevant. I'm sorry. Sorry. Contextually relevant app recommendations. Oh boy. Hang on. I need another drink. Plus, and I'm happy about this. Auto updates on iOS. OS 10 got auto updates, iOS got auto updates. I'm glad they're catching up in that sense. Still have a bit more work to do to catch up to Android in terms of app integration. I really like how Google Play works. You can press an install button from a web browser. It goes to your phone or, or, or tablet, and it's, it's there on Android. I wish Apple would do the same thing. Maybe at some point they will. Uh, music, this is not about Android versus iOS, by the way. Just got to throw that out there. I'm just talking about iOS, but I'm, I'm, I'm acknowledging that I appreciate other features and other platforms iOS 7 Music has better iCloud integration. They announced iTunes Radio. It may potentially be a Pandora killer for those who have never used Pandora before. Uh, it'll work, you know, on your Apple TV, any iOS device, essentially. Uh, this iTunes Radio, not iRadio, iTunes Radio. It's free with ads or ad-free if you have iTunes Match. So if you don't want ads, pay for iTunes Match. You can upload your MP3s to the cloud and have them matched by iTunes. And Amazon's uh, been doing that for quite some time as well. iOS 7, the notification sync, uh, and I think I referred to that earlier. Uh, Voice-based FaceTime instead of just you know talking to someone by way of a video. You can just do it by voice. That's nice. Uh, they also noted the additional tweak of an inclinometer, which I believe is based on the gyroscope. So the hardware may already exist, but they may add a different parameter for developers. And a uh, big bonus, user blocking for messages and FaceTime. Uh, and I, I'm very appreciative of that because uh, I had no other way of doing it. So I, I, I'm glad they finally released that. Um, they also noted with iOS 7, 60 frame per second video capture. Wow. Uh, I'm surprised no one else really picked up on that. Barcode scanning integrated with API calls. Very nice as well. So maybe we'll see a QR code native functionality at some point in the future. Um, it's available in beta for developers today and also will be available later this fall for everybody else. What I might do is load iOS 7 uh, in beta on my iPad mini just to show it off. I, I don't have time this uh, coming week, unfortunately, but I will be doing that sooner rather than later just to play around with it. I'm not willing to do that on my iPhone because this is my primary communications device. I do not want to screw it up. Uh, now, one thing I wanted to spend time talking about before I really round this out, uh, or begin to wind down, I should say, I am rounding out, was one feature that I don't think people understand just how important it is, activation lock. And this is something, you, you know, if you've ever lost an iOS device, you can use Find My Phone to find it or, you know, potentially remotely wipe it, which is a big deal. The problem is, is if a thief 
you know, it turns off Find My iPhone, which a lot of them have probably figured out by now, or they wipe your device, you're never going to find it again. And carriers are the worst. They, they actually activate uh, phones that have known hardware codes that are stolen. They, and, and carriers really, to me, this is more of a carrier problem than it is a phone problem. Because the carrier should not allow, if in a device ID tied to an account is activated by another user, that, that, that should never be uh, activated, ever, anywhere in the world. And that is, it's a problem. Carriers are just ignoring this. So Apple, in that, so shame on you carriers that aren't paying attention to this because you're enabling thieves to, 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 to just keep the, the market going. Well, you know, if you, if you cut off any value to a stolen device, you're you're basically drying the market up. So you know someone may fence a, an iPhone and say, hey, I got hey, I got an iPhone for you here. It's a, it's, it's a phone, you know. You buy it. Oh, well, if they know that they're not going to be able to use the phone with activation lock, as Apple Apple's calling it, I'll describe it a bit more in a second. They're not going to buy the phone if they know they can't use it. I mean, what what's a thief going to do with it? I mean, he's doing he's stealing for kicks. No, not likely. He's stealing it to make easy money. But if he can't make money with it because the device won't work with activation lock. What's he going to do? So there are likely going to be ways around it, and maybe Apple's consider that, including, and I'm, at this point I should probably probably better describe what activation lock is. Inst before you can reset the device, you have to have an Apple ID, username, password. Big deal. So not so, And that's tied to the phone, not just any Apple ID. So if you steal this device from me and you try to reset it, uh, you won't be able to unless you have my Apple ID, username, and password. And it's going to still be tied to my username and password, even after you reset. If you go through and you try to reset it by way of hardware, you don't mess with software at all, it's still going to ask you, I'm like, hey, in order to reactivate, I need the username and password tied to this phone. So how are thieves going to get around that? It's a huge deterrent, or at least enough of a deterrent. Or more importantly, it's a step in the right direction. Do you know how big of a, a problem I, iOS device in general, how, how big of a problem it is? Huge. So Apple has taken a huge uh, leap forward in deterring theft. And I think they this is probably, it was a little understated, but I think probably one of the bigger announcements today. Activation lock is a big deal. I know plenty of people who have had their iOS devices stolen. You know why? They're valuable. Well, if you remove the value from a device, if it's stolen, no one's going to buy it. You can't reactivate the phone or the iOS device without the username and password, the iTunes or the iCloud or the Apple ID, whatever they're calling it these days. You can't reactivate it unless you have the one that's tied to the phone, the hardware. How, how are you going to get around that? I'm sure someone will figure out a way, but most thieves won't be able to, to put two and two together. The market may very well dry up, or let me put it to you this way. If they figure out a way around it, Apple at least has their eye on the ball. I, I just want to say that I really appreciate that. And on behalf of everybody who's had an iOS device stolen, uh, let me just say thank you, Apple, for doing that. That is a great addition to your software, uh, something that absolutely everybody will appreciate should they lose their device. Plus, that uh, messages would be, even if they were able to reset, that message would be omnipresent that you would send out through the Find My iPhone feature. Like, you know, if you know if lost, call blah, you know, or whatever message you want to have, it would be pretty much frozen in there until it was, uh, you know, authenticated as the original user. And I, I think it's a big deal, even if it was reset. I mean, it's 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 really, it's a step in the. I I, I don't want to belabor the point. Otherwise, uh, 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 suffice it to say, uh, I thought it was a great uh, feature for Apple to cover. So that's really all I wanted to cover today. I, I'm going to come back tomorrow with the, the regular TLDR, but this is the big announcement. Uh, and I know I took a long time to talk, and thank you for bearing with the, the throat thing and the, the delayed video production. It may hit a few hiccups this week. I apologize. I'm going to be traveling overseas doing this 11-hour flight with these great thinkers. I'll be producing video with that as well. Uh, I'm trying to get out as many TLDRs this week as I possibly can. And I think Wednesday, possibly... Uh, I may be, at some point this week, I'm going to be uploading, it might even be Thursday, I may be uploading uh, my, one, at some point, I'll be uploading my Google Glass experience that I had at Vlogger Fair, hundreds of people, thousand, uh, wow, over a thousand people, okay, yeah, we did, we had 1,300 people, uh, th I, can I say thousands yet? No, I can when we hit 2,000 next year. Uh, hundreds of people had a Google Glass experience thank to, thanks to 
Desmond Smith. Ask DES on Twitter. You've seen him in this YouTube channel before. I had my first Google Glass experience. Very excited. I was invited. Uh, I was accepted into the program. Now I have to figure out how I'm going to get back to San Francisco after this next trip. Uh, so I'm going to be looking for a sponsor for that too. These things are expensive. You got to understand, it, it takes money to get these things. So I was very grateful to have that experience, thanks to Des, and many other people did as well. Uh, just another bonus for coming uh, to uh, Vlogger Fair for many people. So look for my Google Glass impressions or experience, whatever I'm going to title it, this week. Thank you for all your uh, all your well wishes and support. Uh, you know, it's been a really uh, wacky past few days, but it's been a good past few days. And I, I just wanted to say uh, thank you. I really appreciate everything that you guys are doing within this community. Hope to be able to meet you in person, if not at a future vlogger fair, maybe even at impromptu meetups. I got to figure out where the hell we can meet in London now. <laughs> Is anybody out there in the UK? Do, do, do you want to meet me in person? We can f figure something out. There got to be other YouTubers in UK. There, there have to be. I know there, there's, there's definitely UK YouTubers out there, aren't there? We'll see you later.